welcome to new discussion of this uh, remote sensing essential course and today we are going to discuss uh, about uh, uh, remote sensing of moon and mars and uh, you know that uh, nowadays lot of discussion is happening about uh, moon surface and especially the south pole where india was trying to land its own rover and also uh, mangalyaan was also launched uh, earlier so we will be discussing uh, what is so interesting about moon and mars and uh, everything is being done so far at least by india through remote sensing so the as uh, you know that the uh, moon has always been a uh, very you know strange and wonderful celestial body for the humans and uh, 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 since uh, uh, long people have been trying uh, to uh, get as much as information about uh, moon and other planets also and uh, though moon is not planet moon is the satellite of the earth so in galileo started in 17th century and then uh, later on other astro uh, astronomers have also made uh, telescopic observations and uh, but uh, all these thing continues later on uh, then the satellites were planned and uh, to orbit the moon and collect as much as data information especially remote sensing images so that is the um, as i have already mentioned that the moon is the earth's only natural satellite and it is the fifth largest satellite in the solar system and uh, though we can from earth we can see a uh, moon through naked eye or simple telescope um, uh, and one can discern two major types of terrain that is relatively bright highlands and darker plains this we have been seeing and uh, a moon surface is basically marked by large number of craters uh, which can be studied uh, of course nowadays with the satellite uh, data of which are orbiting the moon say like uh, chandrayaan and others chandrayaan 2 is also there which is orbiting very successfully uh, so uh, closer the view of its surface uh, we could obtain from unmanned spacecraft uh, which traveled near to the moon and uh, that made a history and uh, and knowing and uh, the natural satellite earth's natural satellite and the first program was started by uh, soviet union that later uh, and later other countries also joined and uh, man could uh, also uh, did a landing on moon surface and uh, as you know that the first uh, landing was done by apollo and uh, two astronauts uh, neil armstrong and uh, another other one uh, which uh, came which uh, were first human landing achieved it during the apollo 11 uh, in 1969 mission and uh, of course uh, before that uh, several missions were there uh, to uh, to get the maximum information about the moon surface and this is what the most famous uh, photograph and that apollo 11 was first uh, spacecraft that landed on the first uh, two people on the moon and uh, these people were of course neil armstrong and budge aldrin uh, both were americans and landed lunar module eagle on 10th on 20th of july 1969 at 2017 utc so that was a great step in in to you know visit another body especially that the moon and the armstrong basically became the first in the history who step into the lunar surface and later on also his colleague and uh, budge aldrin also after 6 hours and uh, joined with him on the moon surface and then together they spent about 2 hours outside the spacecraft 
and uh, have collected large number of samples of about 21 kg of lunar material that material included rocks and soils which uh, brought back to the earth surface and studied about uh, uh, their mineralogy and especially looking for the water content also. These are the uh, very famous photograph again that uh, 10 more astronauts who are shown here have also walked on the moon surface. So, uh, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin were the first two, later on um, many also joined. Aldrin is seen here uh, also, Armstrong is standing behind. So, there were a lot of Americans who walked on the surface of the moon very successfully. Uh, so, uh, so far now, we are having quite good amount of information about the nature and topography of the moon's surface through all these missions and of course uh, continuous coverage by satellites of uh, many countries including India and uh, through this Mangalyaan, uh, Chandri, sorry, Chandrayaan 1 and Chandrayaan 2. A uh, very good product which was created by Google Earth. So, when you install Google Earth on your a small utility when you install on your computer. At the same time, you also install uh, Google uh, Moon and Google Mars as well. And uh, as for the Google Earth, uh, you are having satellite images of the Earth and digital elevation model. So, same with the Google Moon and Google Mars, you are having uh, same kind of uh, arrangement there, a 3D, three-dimensional perspective view of the Moon uh, can be visualized on your screen with very high resolution satellite images. Images of course uh, taken by our Chandrayaan 1 uh, via a special camera was there which is terrain mapping camera uh, for the uh, mapping of the terrain and especially the uh, you know the elevation model to prepare elevation model and also one important scanner was there which is hyperspectral scanner uh, to study basically different minerals and uh, if at all there is a water that too is. This is the picture of uh, or is, uh, screen uh, screenshot of uh, uh, Google Moon. Large part of uh, Google Moon has already been covered in this. Of course, this uh, the black part is also covered with uh, some very special resolution images and uh, the entire moon surface is uh, you would see when you start zooming it especially the dark parts and other parts that the entire surface of the moon is pitted with the uh, these uh, meteorites and it is having craters throughout. Some parts of uh, that are having uh, less craters, some are having more craters but there are uh, craters are there. As we know that uh, you know, our eyes are uh, are effective only in the visible part of EM spectrum, but uh, there are, uh, you know, spacecraft sensors which can uh, do the, uh, you know, scanning or collect the data in other parts of EM spectrum. So, a spacecraft uh, spectrometer uh, measure also these longer or short wavelength part from visible and uh, therefore, it becomes possible. Uh, to detect uh, different minerals and minerals within some rocks and get more idea about the moon surface. What are the materials are available? For example, uh, here uh, that uh, rock olivine uh, was seen on uh, was of course brought back to the earth. So, this rock contains olivine a beautiful often green iron bearing mineral and it definitely it has got a complete different spectra as compa uh, compared to an orthocytic uh, plagioclase which is shown here and this is a uh, light colored an orthocyte of uh, lunar highlands of from higher grounds and uh, is uh, made of uh, an orthocytic plagioclase a uh, feldspar which is uh, rich in aluminum and calcium and uh, the spectra of uh, this uh, anar anarthocytic uh, plagioclase 
uh, is completely different than olivine. Similarly, there is another uh, mineral pyroxene which you can see here. So, the spectral curve of pyroxene is also uh, different here uh, that the pyroxene is a, a relatively darker mineral containing iron and magnesium and the uh, basalts of lunar uh, mana are rich in uh, pyroxene and that is what we get uh, pyroxene also. And then limonite contains uh, another uh, limonite uh, uh, throughout this uh, part of EM spectrum is having similar response. It is a sort of a straight line parallel to x axis or the wavelength which is lignite contains iron and uh, titanium. It is a dark mineral that reflects little light. So, um, uh, this is of course uh, visible part is here which you can see in the first part and later on you are having other part of EM spectrum. This is how you can distinguish different minerals on the surface of the moon. And uh, of course, the rock samples were collected by many astronauts. So, those samples have also been analyzed and uh, whatever is uh, available on the surface of the moon, that, uh, that information, lot of that information is now uh, on the earth uh, with the scientists who have been working uh, there. So, uh, uh, there were special missions like moon mineralogy mapper. Uh, uh, on a, which was a, a went along with the Chandrayaan spacecraft and which sees the expanded range of uh, 400 to 300, 3000 nanometer or 3 micrometer microns and this significant uh, because uh, the spectroscopy signatures of water is stronger between 2.5 to uh, 3 microns. And that was basically purpose of uh, uh, this sensor or mapper on uh, uh, Chandrayaan 1 of NASA. So, this was a sort of collaboration between NASA and ISRO to have a joint mission of, of this mapper. And uh, one other thing is uh, that atmosphere uh, which is around the earth is not at the same as uh, on the moon. So, it has a relatively very thin atmosphere. And uh, this, uh, this is a uh, advantage for from remote sensing point of view. If you recall the discussion on atmospheric distortions in remote sensing images of earth, lot of distortions occurs in the uh, satellite images of the earth. But when we start taking images of the moon through different missions like Chandrayaan 1, 2 or other countries uh, satellites or sensors. Then the uh, atmospheric effects are very less because of it is very thin and uh, the thickness is uh, close to a blanket. Uh, you can imagine that only uh, less than a centimeter thick atmosphere is there. So, it uh, does not affect the same way uh, the uh, electromagnetic waves as in case of the earth which is uh, thick of many kilometers. So, this thin layer above the lunar surface is basically technically known as the exosphere and uh, this exosphere has the gas molecules are so distance that they never seem to collide. And uh, this uh, ad advantage is from remote sensing point of view, but uh, may not be good from uh, you know having a, li a life on the surface of the moon. Because the uh, earth atmosphere though it creates problem for remote sensing, but the same time it is uh, it supports the sustainability of life on the earth surface. So, this thin atmosphere of the moon basically consists of some uh, unusual gases including sodium, potassium which generally we do not get uh, in the uh, atmosphere of the earth, Mars or Venus. Mars too is having very thin atmosphere around it and therefore, expectancy of life there is uh, very less and uh, it is not expected basically. And due to thin atmosphere of the moon surface or around the moon, uh, remote sensing of moon is relatively easy or better and good and uh, therefore, we have 
less distortions and then it is possible to create uh, or to get a very good uh, data of the moon surface. As you can see here that if you uh, search uh, Google and especially this uh, moon part, you get uh, not only images of Apollo, you get also the visible images of Apollo, you get a digital elevation model which is in the background it is now being shown and also uh, the geological maps have also been prepared for all parts of uh, moon surface like which one you are seeing here is one of the example is. So, when you choose this geologic you get uh, uh, you know the there is a grid which has been marked and uh, uh, for any cell of that uh, thing you get a uh, very good uh, geological map prepared of course on the earth based on the data and samples we are collected remote sensing data and samples we are collected of moon surface. So, that much of detailed information of moon surface is now available on the earth including of course, detailed digital high resolution digital elevation model is also available shader relief model you are seeing in the background. Of course, uh, the same data sets you can also see uh, on the Google earth. Uh, one other advantage with Google moon or Google Mars is having compared to Google earth is that uh, it also shows the digital elevation model without satellite images. So, you have got the option to choose like uh, Apollo uh, images or visible images or elevation whereas, on the for the Google earth indirectly we get the elevation values, but directly uh, we cannot see a digital elevation model or shader relief model of the Google, uh, Google earth. So, in that way uh, it is a, a very good advantageous yes, for uh, us. Now, uh, you know Apollo 17 uh, remember that uh, 11 carried the uh, Neil Armstrong and uh, uh, Aldrin but uh, then this uh, Apollo 17 astronaut Gene Kernan was the last man on the moon and uh, there he left a plaque which read here man completed his first uh, exploration of the moon on December 1972 and made the spirit of peace in which uh, we came we reflect in the lives of all mankind. And uh, a, a, a the prober a is there which is shown here a, he himself was there and a big rock exposure and uh, can be seen also in this photograph. So, that kind of detailing has been done uh, between 1969 to 1972 through various Apollo missions and therefore, we, we have been able to even prepare geological maps uh, in detailed geological maps of the surface of the moon. Now, the moon rocks are they are on display at various museums and uh, this is 180 pounds uh, or uh, 382 kg of rock and other surface materials uh, which, uh, uh, which, uh, which is of course, belongs to the moon. So, it is called the moon rock rather than identifying different minerals or uh, special rocks. So, uh, now when we go for the Mars. Uh, then Mars is the fourth planet as we know from the sun and the second smallest planet in the solar system after Mercury. But uh, Mars has also been uh, very interesting uh, for human and a uh, lot of missions are going on around Mars as well to know about the surface and interior and uh, even to know whether there is a presence of life or not, especially looking for the water. So, this is Mars is uh, named as uh, on Roman uh, god of war uh, which is often referred as red planet because it is full of iron oxide uh, on the surface and uh, th that gives the reddish appearance in the satellite images, especially the visible images. And uh, Mars is a uh, of course, is a terrestrial planet with thin atmosphere. The atmosphere which we get around the earth is nowhere at least so far this is what we know especially I am talking about moon and Mars. So, Mars too is having very thin atmosphere and therefore, 
uh, it is again wonderful for remote sensing. And uh, this surface of Mars is uh, having a lot of uh, again impact craters like of moon and uh, also it is having um, volcano, valleys, desert, polar ice caps of the earth like you are having on the earth also. But the interesting part here like on the earth uh, we are having uh, plates and therefore we are having plate tectonics, seismic activities and tectonic landforms. But on surface of moon or Mars we do not have plates like earth and therefore there is no plate tectonics, there are no seismic activities and therefore there are no tectonic landforms either. So, the landforms which we see on the surface of moon and Mars are due to the impact craters and uh, some volcano activities and then we are having uh, valleys, maybe some uh, fluid must have been flowing. So, fluvial landforms can be seen. We are also see the aeolian uh, landforms that uh, uh, occurs in the desert conditions and also uh, polar ice caps uh, like on earth. So, uh, because of uh, of course, uh, as earth rotates, moon rotates, but the, this uh, rotational period and seasonal cycles of Mars are uh, quite similar to the earth and uh, uh, as it also tilt that produces the seasons as on the earth. So, Mo uh, Mars is quite uh, uh, similar in many ways except from uh, a point of view atmosphere and again it is uh, because of very thin atmosphere for remote sensing it is a wonderful. And this is the example of uh, uh, Google Mars again like in Google Moon uh, all those things have been organized here that uh, you are having digital elevation model, high spatial resolution satellite images, everything is dropped and in the 3D perspective view of any part of the Mars can be seen. Now, in recent years, the planet Mars has been explored extensively, even India is also having its Mangalyaan mission and through these uh, man-made satellites which were of course launched from the earth. And uh, the first uh, uh, mission to the Mars uh, or the satellite which was launched as Mars 2 which was successful in 1971 uh, by uh, USSR uh, uh, at the then USSR and after that many countries like USA, Russia, India have sent including China have sent various orbiting satellites a total number of 13 missions so far uh, around the Mars. Many of these missions are still operational like Mangalyaan and sending lot of remote sensing data uh, towards the earth. So, the latest in this series have been of course, the missile Mangalyaan 1 and uh, this was launched on 5th November 19, uh, 2013 and uh, the USA Mars atmosphere and uh, uh, volatile evolution MAVIN uh, which was launched by USA on 18th November 2013. So, just after 13 days of uh, Mangalyaan and uh, this uh, mission of USA was also launched because sometimes uh, the window which is available time window which is available is in that period. So, both countries have done that kind of uh, launching. Now, uh, this Martian surface that is surface of the Mars and uh, this uh, atmosphere consists approximately 96 percent of carbon dioxide. And uh, if you see here the and uh, it has got traces of free oxygen. So, lack of oxygen uh, would make very difficult for human to uh, sustain there. And, uh, Contrary to this, you are having 96 percent of carbon dioxide and the remaining is like 1.9 percent is argon, 1.9 percent is nitrogen and just little bit traces of free oxygen is available. 
of course the carbon monoxide and uh, water on the caps uh, is also there apart from these gases then methane is also there and some other gases in and uh, trace forms are also there the major part as you can see is the carbon dioxide which is 96 percent and rest are very very little if you compare the earth with the mars see the nitrogen which we are having on the earth is uh, you know is about uh, 76 78 percent and whereas on the mars you are having about 2 percent and uh, of course oxygen is also available about uh, more than 20 percent but on in uh, on the surface of the mars hardly there so that makes a lot of difference in the atmospheric conditions of mars and earth atmosphere is thin it is prevalent with only and uh, this uh, carbon dioxide and that creates a uh, life difficult there also it is uh, important to note about the atmosphere uh, which uh, of the mars is quite dusty because uh, uh, the mars surface is having lot of loose soil there and uh, as i have said that is iron rich soil and uh, because of impact craters and other uh, activities and uh, this uh, it is a uh, the sky is light brown or orange red color when seen from the surface and uh, uh, the remote sensing data which were gathered from Mars exploration rovers uh, indicate the suspended particles of roughly 1.5 micrometer in diameter. So it is having dust in its atmosphere though the atmosphere is very thin nonetheless. Uh, these things are important to know uh, from remote sensing point of view because the images which we get will have effects of these things. So if we go for any quantitative, uh, quantitative analysis of uh, implying remote sensing of Mars surface then these things will play a very important role. Now as you know that uh, the atmosphere uh, of Mars is very dusty and uh, giving Martian sky a light brown or orange red color when seen from the surface and uh, if we see and uh, this uh, this is very uh, interesting about Mars as well. If you recall the discussion which we had about the false topographic perception phenomena uh, earlier examples were shown of the earth later on also examples were shown for the moon surface and Mars surface in of the satellite images. What on the surface of the Mars what you are having these impact craters. So uh, these impact craters uh, uh, if you see there uh, then what, what do you find that these impact craters uh, sometimes uh, uh, they are seen like this in the images and it you do not get uh, a correct perception about the depth. But when you rotate by 180 degree then you get the correct perception about uh, these uh, impact craters. So that means the FTP the uh, false topographic perception phenomena uh, it can also be seen in remote sensing images of Mars as well including moon and earth. So this is what uh, uh, for that purpose one is 180 degree rotated another one is non rotated and that is what you see the difference uh, in the uh, perception especially the depth perception of Mars images. Similarly here also that uh, this uh, map projected at the original image on the left side and on the right side you see here it is the image rotated by 180 degree and then you see a completely different perception. So while interpreting the satellite images of Mars like Mangalyaan, one has to be very careful that in which side is the north, which one is giving you the correct perception, depth perception, then interpretation should start. I mentioned that there are some fluvial landforms and this is what it depicts here the fluvial landforms very clearly. I am not saying that these landforms have been made by water but there must have been some fluid which has created the fluvial landforms 
quite similar to what we see on the surface of the earth. So, having that kind of understanding about uh, landforms which are created by the water movement of water on surface of the earth, if we see the similar kind of characteristics then we can say that these are uh, fluvial landforms. Uh, there are a few more examples here like uh, uh, this is uh, uh, the top left image is suffering from FTPP and as you can see all these craters are uh, not giving you correct depth perception when it is rotated by 180 degree now these craters and other parts are giving you uh, correct depth perception. But the purpose of showing this image was uh, if you if you see this uh, this part which is having the seam or joining of two scenes and uh, one scene is having uh, you know F, 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 suffering from F, F, FTPP and another one is not there and therefore you see this seam very distinctly and you, you see that there is a sharp cut in, in the landforms which uh, naturally it cannot occur. That means it is the FTPP exists on the surface of the Mars as well of remote sensing images. That uh, clearly uh, a clear indication of existence of FTPP on the remote sensing images of Mars. Similarly, uh, many uh, such uh, things which can be seen and uh, these images we have grabbed from uh, of course Google Mars images, mosaic uh, are available on the uh, Google Mars and that gives us a lot of information about the surface of the Mars. So, uh, as I have said about Moon and Mars that both are having very thin atmosphere and from remote sensing perspective these are wonderful bodies. One is of course the satellite of the earth, another one is a separate planet but because of thin atmosphere they provide a, a very good uh, opportunities to study these planets or these bodies through remote sensing data which is of course being done. And though the surface of the Mars or the atmosphere is having some dust, but uh, being a very thin uh, that does not affect much. Of course, uh, on the surface of moon or Mars you do not have any vegetation, you do not have any other distortions apart from only FTPP. False topographic perception and uh, distortion or phenomena definitely exist on the surface of the moon as well as on Mars. Otherwise, uh, these are uh, wonderful for uh, uh, remote sensing point of view. And a lot of uh, nowadays discussion uh, is going on uh, after uh, India is having its own missions to moon and Mars and uh, uh, orbiting satellites both Chandrayaan 2 and Mangalyaan 1 are still working, images are available and therefore lot of uh, things uh, can be studied especially about landforms, uh, presence of mineral deposits um, and uh, maybe uh, you know some uh, study of atmosphere whatever the thin is and uh, major focus of these studies have been to look for the water. So, this bring uh, to uh, this brings us to the end of uh, this uh, brief discussion on remote sensing of moon and Mars. Thank you very much. Thank you.